In this video, we will be discussing the cost of the battle pass in Halo Infinite, how 343 plans to deal with hackers, and the best way to prepare yourself for Halo Infinite's multiplayer. I answer that and a lot more in this video, so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. So every once in a while on my channel, I like to go in and ask you guys some questions if you have any about Halo Infinite. And you guys certainly responded with like almost 200 comments. And so I picked out a few comments from the thread here so we can discuss some more awesome Halo Infinite greatness. The best way to participate with these Q&As is to subscribe to the channel so you can catch those community posts when they do go live. And if you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as a ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. The first question is from Julian Del Gobo asks, Hello Kevin, do we know how much the season pass is going to cost? That's certainly one thing 343 has not mentioned yet about the battle pass. We do know that they will not expire. You can always go back and purchase the old battle passes actually to go grind those if you feel like you have the time to do so. And there is going to be a two tier system with the battle pass. There's going to be a free tier and a paid tier as well. Most likely the paid tier giving you more like challenge swamps, XP boosts, maybe in-game currency and things like that. While the free version probably still let you grind out various armor sets or maybe even weapons if they get put into the battle pass. But if you care for accomplishing challenges, grinding XP, and things like that, buying into the battle pass might be the best way to go. But how much is that going to cost for every three months when they plan to release a new season? Well, the best thing to do is actually look at what other games are doing right now with similar battle pass systems and how much are they charging for those. Now, when doing research for this video, I noticed a few things and trends about this as well as that each game that's free to play has their own type of currency in there. So for Fortnite, for example, which I think kind of popularized the Battle Pass system, it costs 950 V-Bucks to get the Battle Pass, but how much does 950 V-Bucks cost? Well, for example, right here, 1,000 V-Bucks will cost you $8 within the US. Now let's compare with Apex Legends. It says right here, grab the Battle Pass for 950 Apex Coins. And it says right here that 1,000 Apex Coins will cost you $10 in the US. To buy into the 100 tiers of Call of Duty's Battle Pass, it's 1,000 COD points, but how much does 1,000 COD points cost? It says right here that 1, 1,000 COD points will cost you $10 in the US or $8.50 for the EU. So in reviewing the competition that Halo Infinite will have, it seems like the Battle Pass will most likely cost around $10 as that's kind of like the industry standard right now. So $10 for every three months, that's four times, equaling 40 bucks a year. Which may sound like a lot, but when you think about it, if you're like a guy who plays a lot of Halo, it's honestly not going to be that much when comparison of how much does the item cost to time well spent. I guarantee if you're going to be buying into the Battle Pass, most likely Halo is going to be your main game you're going to be playing, so you most likely will get your $10 worth every three months. Flying Ostrich asks, how are 343 Industries going to stop hackers when they can make new accounts and keep hacking? This is a very good question and honestly we won't really know until we actually get a chance to play the game. Right now the MCC is rather free of hackers though I've been seeing them a little bit more often here and there in Invasion and also in the custom game browser as well. This could potentially be a really significant issue because right now on the Call of Duty side of things it seems like every patch that comes out a new wave of hackers come in and basically ruin the experience for the brand new season or at least a mid-season update like it's recently going on right now with Warzone that like we're constantly going through these big waves of spikes of hackers coming into the game they ban all their accounts they just make new accounts hack again make another account and so it depends on how 343 and Microsoft want to handle this there will be an anti-cheat with Halo Infinite obviously to stop hackers but there's going to be some eventual people are going to figure out ways around it and the most important thing are they going to IP ban those people or are they only going to account ban those people this is something I hope that 343 will work on as they have spent so much time working on the slip space engine to make sure they can update and make content with it I'd assume that they'd be able to find ways to edit up the coding in some way to make sure that to avoid these hackers ruining the gameplay experience. There are ways with anti-cheat to make a much more secure game, but that a lot of times what that will do with the anti-cheat to make it extra secure for the gameplay time will actually be much more intrusive on your system. I believe Valorant has a rather intrusive anti-cheat system, but I've heard it works. It's a never-ending arms race when it comes to hackers in games, and so it's something that's always going to be there. It just depends how prevalent it's going to be. Russell Moore asks, 
will there be bot support for split screen games and bot support for like custom games, BTB and all other game types and developer made maps as well? Or are the bots restricted to the academy and only eight bots per match? From what it sounds like what we've read and what we've heard about these bots that they will be in matchmaking and they will kind of fill in spots for when the lobby gets low in population but as soon as someone joins in the bot gets kicked out. I can assume something very similar when it comes to custom games as well. As it's been really traditional with the development of Halo that a lot of features that are in multiplayer for the matchmaking side of things can be replicated within the custom game side of things as well. Obviously we weren't able to do that with Warzone with the last Halo game, but I feel like it'd be very true for you to be able to just kind of load into a custom game with some bots. I think that would be pretty awesome. Finn's friend asks, what's the best way to get ready for Halo Infinite's multiplayer? That's gonna be actually rather interesting as Halo Infinite looks to be kind of an amalgamation of various aspects of previous Halo games. Like in Halo 5, we have Sprint, Clamber, and Slide, but it also looks to be kind of very familiar to Halo 3 kind of experience. And so I think there's kind of be like different games you're gonna want to play to get ready for playing Halo Infinite. I think one game you're gonna wanna play is gonna be Halo Reach actually. As Reach I think does a great job of trying to have a nice mix of like classic Halo gameplay along with armor abilities and these which you could supplement for like equipment in a way. I think there's gonna be a very strong Halo 3 influence when it comes to the gameplay as well as I most people will believe that Halo 3 is like kind of the pinnacle of Halo 3 multiplayer gameplay. So I do think that there's gonna be a solid base of like a Halo 3 experience but also with some advances like Sprint, Clamber, and Slide from Halo 5 but then also kind of a little bit of a randomness element added in there with equipment. So you can probably play a little bit more of Halo 3, a little bit of Reach as well, and probably Halo 5. Kirito Asuna asks, will our multiplayer Spartan have a campaign of its own or be with the Master Chief and his campaign? I believe that they're referencing this line from the most recent development update by Halo Infinite. Joseph Staten said here, at the center of our plans is a goal to deeply root our multiplayer character in the greater Halo universe and give them a vital role in the Halo story moving forward. How exactly we're going to do this in the seasons and years ahead? Well, we're not ready to share the details just yet. I think what they mean by this is essentially that through gameplay of playing the multiplayer will kind of have like an overarching purpose to why you're doing certain actions or why there are certain events within Halo Infinite's multiplayer experience. I've talked about this in previous videos, but saying how games like Call of Duty, Fortnite, Apex Legends, have these like overarching stories that provide context to the reasons why the gameplay is changing like there might be a new map or changes to the map or something like that bringing in new characters and things like that all through the multiplayer experience now these are very lightly written kind of stories these so don't expect to have like full-on like new campaigns every three months from Halo Infinite. I wouldn't expect that, but something to kind of just like change the context of certain things. Kind of like what we experienced with the Yappening with the MCC, where like you had special kind of game modes, you had special kind of rewards tied to that season as well, because Yap Yap the Destroyer came in and tried ruining the experience of MCC. So it's something like that I could totally see happening within Halo Infinite. But will we see our custom Spartan within the campaign or side by side with Master Chief? I highly doubt that. If I remember correctly from hearing online that Halo Infinite will be two-player couch co-op split screen, but also four-player online co-op. But who's going to populate those three other players? Because there's going to be one Master Chief, but who's going to be the three other players? Possibly your online Spartan? That would be really awesome and I'd love to see that happen. Or it could just be three other Master Chiefs like we've had traditionally within Halo games, except for Halo 3. Though we do see that Halo Infinite has a really big influence from Halo Reach, and in Halo Reach you could play as your custom Spartan within the campaign, which I absolutely love that feature. And I would love to see something very similar in Halo Infinite. If you've been on the loop for Halo news for the last few days or so, you gotta play this right here for all my daily uploads for Halo news. So thank you so much for watching, I greatly appreciate it, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.